Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the actual first part of the top 100, um, 100 through 91 today. Uh, I'm not going to spend as much time, hopefully, as I did last year, talking about everything that goes behind the top 100 and the choices that I make, um, but I'm sure I'll sprinkle it in as I get through various different things, and uh, let's just get into it. Um, of the games I'm talking about today, these 10, I own six of them, so I'll show them to you. If I don't have them on hand, I'll put up some pictures um, so you can take a look at some, uh, some of what they look like. So, without further ado, number 100. Number 100 is a real-time game, which is something I tend not to like too much. It's also a cooperative game, which I famously don't like very many cooperative games. Uh, this one I do, number 100, is Magic Maze. It was 68 last year, so it's fallen by a bit. The reason it's fallen by a bit is I just haven't really played it very much, um, which is one of the main reasons why games fall, obviously, is because I just haven't played them, and that's also an indication that I don't like them as much. But Magic Maze, fantastic game. Um, you cannot talk to your teammates unless you're at one of the spots where you flip over the timer and you pause it. But you don't want to spend too much time talking to them because the timer is still going. Um, it's a great game because you can't talk, but you have this little thing that's like, I need you to make a move. If you, Playing with four is perfect because you have all these various different fantasy characters who are trying to run through a mall and grab their stuff. It's a weird theme, but it works. And usually you... If you play it four, then each of you can only move in one of the cardinal directions. So maybe you need someone to go north. They really got to move those people, but they're not seeing that they need to do that. So you take this little pawn and you put it in front of them and you, you can't say anything, but you're like, I need you to move. And that really stresses the person out, of course, which is like fun. Um, and then it happens to you and you're like, oh, why am I playing this game? But it's a great game. Love it. Highly recommend it. That's Magic Maze. And moving on to number 99, which is another game I don't own. This one is called Baron Park. I uh, almost bought it from Melissa, and then Rich got in there first, so... Rich. Um, Baron Park is a game about uh, creating a bear park, which I think is what Baron Park translates to from the German, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a game about polyominoes, and you're putting the polyominoes out on the various different squares. Those are the Tetris shapes, polyominoes. Um, a lot of fun seeing how you can fit them in um, and then when you do certain things you get more tiles and you get the bigger tiles you're able to cover up more spaces and you're racing to try and be the one who fills up your park first that doesn't necessarily mean you win because there are points involved in various different objectives a lot of fun um, that's Baron Park number 98 is the first game on this list that I do own and that is the Tea Dragon Society, also the first deck builder, also the first new game on the list. Uh, it has this cute little theme from a comic book that's about tea dragons. But really, this is deck building distilled down to about as low as you can go and as simple as you can. Um, I'm not sure what it says for like age on here. I'm sure it's probably like 8 and up or something like that. Uh, it says 10 and up. You could do this with 6 and up. No, without a, any problem. Plays very quickly. Um, the game can be broken. I played it once with Jonathan, who just kind of broke the game. Um, and now I know not, not to let him do that. But a uh, really fun game that involves uh, deck building and getting points, and it's very cute as well. That's 98, the Tea Dragon Society. Technically, the Tea Dragon Society card game. Number 97. Oh, um, and sorry, last year this was, I said this, this was not on the list. Baron Park was 99, uh, last year it was 93. Uh, I need to get used to this new format telling where it was. Number 97, last year was 95, so it's basically stayed about the same. Maybe even gone up if you consider that there's like 26 new games ahead of it. Um, number 97 is Coup, which is uh, held together with a hair tie here. I go through a lot of hair ties with, for somebody with no hair. Um, Coup is a perfect six-player game. This is the best game, I think. If I was playing with exactly six people, I'd be like, what game should we play? Coup. Um, it's okay with five. Don't play with any other number. Um, but because it's so good with six, I only play with six. Um, in Coup, and I'll show you some of the stuff, you have two cards in front of you, and they're these weird cards with these weird people and some sort of futuristic cyberpunk sort of thing. And they allow you to take different actions. So maybe you have the Duke, and it says, take three coins from the treasury. 
However, so on your turn, you do the action of one of the two cards in front of you. It's not actually true because you do the action of any card, but and because your cards are face down, someone could be like, eh, I don't think you really have that. I challenge that. If they challenge that and they're right, you don't have it, you lose one of your two lives. If they're wrong, they lose one of their two, lo two lives. So it is very much a bluffing game. This is not social deduction. It is bluffing instead. Um, and it's it plays quickly. And it's amazing how well this works on several different levels. That's cool. Number 96, a game I don't have. It was 75 last time. Uh, it's uh, Battlestar Galactica. It's also probably the game on the list I haven't played in the longest. Um, I don't think I have played this game in oh Domino's coffee under the table. It's the professional kind of quality you can expect on this channel. You right there, bud? Um, I don't think I have played Coos in eight years. Or excuse me, Battlestar Galactic. Don't think I've played Battlestar Galactic in eight years. It is one of the best social deduction games. It's also one of the most complicated ones. You have a hidden role. People don't know if you're a Cylon or, or not. You're trying to fight off the Cylons. and like yeah, It follows the show pretty well. Um, and then halfway through the game, you might become one of... You might become a Cylon, even if you weren't. Um, it works really well. It's kind of long. Um, it works better if you know the show. There's a new version of this recently called Unfathomable that I have not played that is essentially the same thing, with but with Cthulhu as the theme. Um, I will probably play it sometime, but it worked better with Battlestar Galactica. Okay, N moving on. Number 95. This was uh, 69 last year, so it's fallen by a bit. Number 95 is For Sale. For Sale is a game where you are buying, it's the real estate game. You're buying properties and then you're selling them. And it has these really fun properties, so your 22 is pretty normal here. But number one, is a cardboard box. It goes all the way up to number 30, which is a space station. Also, all of them have a little, like a creature somewhere in them. Like there's pigeons here on the skyscraper. Um, except for the space station doesn't have a creature, but it does have this little shuttle. So maybe that's a creature or maybe the real creature here is man. Um, for sale also really works well with six people, though I think it's a little bit uh, better at five than coup. Um, they're very close, actually, for what it's worth, um, but I think I'd prefer Coup at 6 and For Sale at 5. I don't know. It's faster and lighter than Coup. It's, this is very much a game I used to introdu introduce people to board gaming, what they call like an intro game, a gateway game, whatever you want to call it, a welcoming game. Um, because and you, only have to, you only have to teach half the game. You only have to teach how you buy the, the cards. And then you teach the second half of the game where you flip the cards and sell them for money. You can teach them when, you can teach them that part when you get to it. That's great. Um, people seem to really enjoy this one. I have a good time teaching this to people, which is one of the reasons why it's as high as it is. Um, that's for sale. Moving on to number 94. Number 94 is Lost Cities. This was 65 last year, so it's fallen by quite a bit. Um, but this is one of the best two-player only games. I don't play a lot of two-player only games. If I'm going to play a two-player game, um, a lot of times I'd prefer to play something that also plays more than two, like plays three or four people, but you can play it at two. Um, this is an amazing, fantastic game. I obviously am not good at describing games because I'm always saying fantastic and whatnot. But in this game... You have these five different ex expeditions you're trying to go on. And so you're trying to play these cards going from the number two up to the number ten. And so here's some various different expeditions. And you get points uh, based on how, which cards you get. But each time you start an expedition, you lose 20 points for it. So if you don't get more than 20, then you don't break even, and that's bad. It's... Uh, it's highly tactical in that you're trying to see what the other person is doing and trying to block them, make sure you're not getting them cards that they need, and hopefully picking up some cards that you need and trying to obscure which ones you're going for early in the game. There's a lot of luck in it, but this is one of the best two-player only games. This actually, for a long time, this was my go-to wedding present. If I thought that people were going to play a game at all, like there was a chance of them doing that, I would get them Lost Cities. So um, 
shout out in the comments if I, <laughs> I'm not doing that for, I'm legitimately interested if anybody's watching this, who I got them Lost Cities for their, uh, for their wedding. I'm not trying to grow this channel or get engagement or anything like that. Um, okay, moving on. Number 93 is one of my smallest games. It is Sprawlopolis. It is 18 cards. This is a wallet game is what they call them. Um, there's a company called Buttonshy Games that makes all of their games have 18 cards or less um, or more if you add in some expansions. But really the base game is 18 cards. And this is a solo only game. That's not true. You can play it with two or three. I would only ever play it solo. I've only ever have played it solo. And in this game, you're building a little city. So you'll be drawing these cards and you'll be putting them down. And you'll be, uh, you know, potentially doing things like this and making little parts of the city. And then it starts to expand outward and you and you put them in different ways to score different points based on, at the beginning of the game, you take a three cards and you flip them up randomly. And on the back of them, it tells you how to score. So in this case, central perks. You get one point for each park block located on the interior of the city and negative two points for each park block on the edge of the city then the number of points you have to get to win the game is the total of the three cards that you have up here. So this one would require seven, but maybe you're playing with this one as well, which is nine, and this one as well. And so you need to get to, 30, uh, to 20 points in order to win that game. So you have these competing things, and then you also get uh, points for creating big blocks of things. So if you have uh, four, four parks right here, and that's your biggest area parks, you would get four points. But you also lose a point for each road, so you're trying to minimize the roads. There's so much to think about that you cannot focus on everything. This game works well for if you are just wanting to spend some time playing a game by yourself. In fact, I should play this game more often. I really need to. Um, sometimes I'll bring a book to a coffee shop. Sometimes I'll bring this game to a coffee shop, and I'll just play this game a few times. Great game. Moving on to number two, uh, and Sprawlopolis, I should say, was not on the list last year. It was, in fact, a, a new game. It is a new game for this year. I hadn't played it before. Um, number 92 is Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. This was 94 last year, so it's basically about the same. And um, it's a social deduction game in which one person knows everything but they cannot communicate with their teammates so the good guys are the investigators and there's a forensic scientist who knows exactly what the murder weapon was and what the um what the clue was everyone else is trying to figure that out except for the murderer and maybe the accomplice who are trying to throw everyone else off the scent um the thing i really love about deception and murder in hong kong is that unlike a lot of social deduction games you are not necessarily you're you're not lying to other people it's not just based on you as an individual and the choices that you've made it's based on the cards that you have out in front of you so there is a lot of i don't mind games where you lie this one i can actually play with my wife um <laughs> because you're it's focusing more on the cards and less on the actions that you've made hard to describe unless you've actually played the game um, but this is a social deduction game for people who don't like social deduction games. Social deduction games are those games where you have a hidden role and you, people might, and you might be a bad guy and you're trying to obscure that fact from other people like Battlestar Galactica. So that's 92, Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Number 91 is also a social deduction game. Um, and, uh, not the OG, but close to it of social deduction games. It was 60 last year, and it is The Resistance. The Resistance is a game I will not play with my wife because it would involve one of us lying to each other. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think I've told her before, I don't want her to know how good I could be at lying to her because I don't lie to her. But like in this game, I would have to if I was, you know, part of the bad guys. Uh, <laughs> in The Resistance, one team, so you have the good guys and you have the bad guys, and all you're doing is choosing people to go on various different missions. If they're a bad guy, they might fail the mission. Um, I haven't played this game in a long time, but there are some amazing moments that I can still remember of fooling people into thinking that I was a good guy when I was a bad guy. 
definitely prefer to be one of the bad guys. Um, I can't remember what they're called, like the agents or something like that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I haven't played it in a long time, but wow, it's, it's, it's got quite the punch. Um, that's number 91, the resistance. And that is the end here. It looks like it's been about 15 minutes, so I'm clearly not doing well at keeping these short. Um, but I hope you enjoyed and, uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the games and, uh, stay tuned for the next one.